How's it going, Leo? How are you today? Good, good. Yeah, chilling. Just, uh, I was actually supposed to start a 10 day meditation retreat today. And then they called me like yesterday in the middle of eating breakfast and they were like, hey, if you can get here in four hours, like, you should come. You're, you're, on, you're next. And so I couldn't do it, but that was crazy. It's been a crazy holiday scramble. Wow. wow, that would have been interesting. I know, it would be cool. Have you done anything like that before? No, I'm trying to do it still, but I wanted to, like, just explore the inside of my head. That is such a worthy thing. It's like, that does happen, I'm sure, with your art, but it would add such a deeper... Yeah, I'm I'm curious. Everyone has their own, like, stories of what not talking for ten days is like, but... It's hard to say what it would be like for you, other than just, like, work. Right. Is it, was it, like, out in the woods somewhere, or? It's in Onalaska, Washington, so it's, oh. like, two-hour drive from here. Yeah. But, I don't know. I thought it would be cool. I was kind of, like, signing up for it on the back of breaking up with someone and just feeling like, I want to figure out myself more and, like, I don't know. I always do that, I like, go through these waves of, like, existential, why do I make artism, and for some reason sitting alone quiet for 10 days seems like it would be a good perspective on that. It would be. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. And when, would it be, would you be able to make art there, or do you even know? Like, is no, it... you can't, like, you can't write, you can't stretch do yoga exercise wow. like you can do nothing but meditate and sit and eat the food that they serve you so it's like a very it's like very controlled environment specifically meant for just like dropping in and no distractions that's amazing yeah what how what avenues have you gone down with that before? Like, have you done? Um, I mean, in the, like the past, past that would all have been like taking psychedelics in a way, just to try and like see what's up in there. Yeah. And then, I've done some other courses on, just kind of. Oh man, I don't even know how to describe them, but self bringing awareness of self <laughs> to the forefront and like a lot of it had to do with looking at relationships in your life and figuring out like where you had kind of been the cause of some disruption or something and like addressing that so like talking to a lot of people from your past or in your present life and like acknowledging what part you may have played in something and that whole point of that thing was to kind of get you to this blank slate sort of like think about it like karma where you're like revisiting all of the things that you'd shaken up since yeah. then and trying to kind of like acknowledge them and get them back to like a place of creation where you can like then like name who you want to become after that and like declare that to people and kind of create yourself through a conversation in a new way to people so I've been on some kick for a while of just trying to like whatever you want to call it self-actualize or understand like who I am and what I'm up to yeah it can be uncomfortable when you start looking in and you're like oh man it's me I'm the one that's bringing some of this stuff in yeah but a lot of us I I like to think that a lot of these people come into our lives right when we need them the most to help us learn the lessons that we really need to learn to like be our best humans. Yeah, for sure. But it can be uncomfortable when it's like, oh man, this is I'm, me, this is my fault. Yeah, totally. That's <laughs> kind of like the biggest thing is like the end of the day, I'm kind of the source of my greatest suffering, which yeah. is a hard pill to swallow sometimes yeah well but a lot of people say that suffering leads to all good, the best stuff good art yeah yeah for sure it does do you think that your art is like a meditation in a way 
Yeah, I think so. Like, specifically with, like, the small works that I do, it is, like, I treat it like a meditation practice, and I try and just have it be a time every day where I am just not really thinking about anything and getting lost in just making brush strokes and playing with, like, textures. I, tr I do my best to always turn my phone off when I do stuff like that and be present with myself and with the work. So that's cool. And definitely, like, the mandalas and everything I do, those... I mean, art in itself is, like, just kind of a meditation as much as you can lose yourself in it. Like, yeah, yeah definitely. A thing that, like, keeps my hands moving, keeps me calm, and, like, makes, creates work, and then that, like, feeds the studio practice, which enables me to do bigger projects and, like, have a space. So I'm trying to think of it like a system that is, like, a healthy system. Yeah. It's good. It seems like it's it seems like it's working cuz you seem like you've got it all. I mean, most of us seem like we've got it all together, but mm -hmm. artists usually their minds are running like 1000 miles an hour. Yeah. Yes. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so what was what was the first time that you made uh like how did you get into the calligraphy? Like the calligraphy, I saw what you call it. Yeah, totally. Uh I mean, I like through graffiti for sure, but I think at some point after I had been doing like wild style pieces where I've really just like to blow the letters out and get super abstracted with it. And I also had like a friend who was into calligraphy in his own style and was teaching me a lot about graffiti, but those things didn't kind of like sync up until a few years later when I was really wanting to get away from just doing graffiti because I felt like I didn't identify with it as much. I identified more with being an artist, but I like really liked this style of line work, this like abstracted pattern line work. I kind of remember like sitting and after drinking a lot of coffee, like doing the outlines on this piece of like eight and a half by 11 lined paper. And I was kind of, I kind of like figured out that I could use the lines and make these shapes and kind of like Tetris it. And like the game kind of became, how can I like abstract these shapes, but like fuse them together so they fit really snug. And it kind of just grew from there. At first it was like, maybe more like abstract expressionism it was just like totally like abstract line work and then I started getting into graphic design and typography and that kind of like brought me around full circle to like lettering and graffiti and calligraphy and I kind of just was like there was people doing that style on Instagram that I was seeing as well and I was like yep okay cool like other people have gotten here this is what it's called. And then like I read Shu's book. Um, Shu is like a graffiti artist from Amsterdam in the eighties who coined the term calligraffiti. And he was the first person to really like put two and two together. So I think after that I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, th I'm gonna do this style and rock with it. Did you have any formal training in it or? Cause... Uh, I didn't for a while and then last year I ended up getting a scholarship from uh, this guy named Paul Antonio and Paul is a crown office scribe and lives in London and so crown office scribes are like pretty highly regarded calligraphers they write calligraphy for the Queen of England and so he has a really beautiful studio in London and uh, when I was there two three years ago I happened to meet him in his studio just off of sending him an Instagram message. He invited me to come by and he like liked my work and we talked and he kind of ended up offering me a scholarship, like not directly, but was like, you should apply for it. And I didn't know how to apply for it, but I think when I got back to 
the States, I like messaged him a couple months later and his intern emailed me back and was just like, congratulations, you got the scholarship. And I was like, oh wow, that's crazy. So I spent the past, I spent last year um, going to Dallas, Texas every couple of months for like 10 days at a time. And uh, I learned Gothic calligraphy, like formal Gothic calligraphy from Paul. Uh, so we learned textualis quadrata and semi quadrata and fracture and batard which are all these different calligraphy hands so that was like pretty fundamental in like getting a, a more formal understanding of like letter form and structure and and like calligraphy training and that really took the work and like tightened it up a bit and gave it like I think it made it made the story better, yeah. At that point, where is it still looking like just like a single letter, or like at what point did it become like that right there? Uh, I mean, it's always like kind of been like that, I guess. But the calligraphy classes like gave it some nuances and some subtle refinements that were like you know, these little manipulations on the ends of the letters or understanding that like you exhale on downstrokes and you breathe in on upstrokes and things like that. And there are just certain, like now if I, when I want to, I can write letter forms in like a much cleaner way and then I can combine it with the abstract stuff. So it kind of like gave me a, another tool in the kit of like the kind of art that I make like I was kind of lacking the calligraphy and the calligraphy -y. I like I could write letters and I was teaching myself but it sort of it like rounded the style out and like kind of felt like I could own that a little bit more yeah did you ever do it like as a graffiti writer on the street or was it all pretty much I mean, not as much, like, when I write graffiti, it's always, like, the hand styles that I do, I really, like, they flow in a similar way, but I almost think the hand styles I do are kind of more, like, Seattle letter style, which I, like, couldn't describe to you as much, but it's different, yeah. Still has a unique style in almost everything. Totally. <laughs> so that's great. At what point did uh did it, like the opportunity to do murals pop up? Like how did that happen the first time? Um, I was hanging out with a friend Noah neighbor, and he was just really cool, and he was looking at my work at some point, and I think was just like, "Yo, I think this would be cool as a mural," and I found this wall like why don't you try painting this and I can help you and so I did this big orange mandala um it's like form line design and that was down on Dearborn Avenue right next to that big Goodwill and it's still there which is crazy that I building's see. like abandoned I don't know what's going on with it but I'm super grateful no one's like tagged over it or anything it's been there for like four years uh, so that was the first one and then I was like fuck yeah all right I just want to paint big and like before that I had like painted in some friends garages and just through graffiti I was like all right I know kind of how to scale my work up and make it big and I had done a couple murals in Portland so I think after that I was just like okay like I'm gonna take this art style and like try and do murals now and so I worked with Noah for like a summer and we did three projects we did that one we did another one on 14th and Pike um, it was like a collaboration right next to this fire station and then we did a huge project down on the Burr Gilman Trail with Mari Shibuya and that was like the three of us and we didn't get paid and it took us like two months it's like a 300 foot wall and like 
30 feet tall. It was huge. We had these like boom lifts. None of us knew what we were doing either. It was at Noah did a little bit for sure. But kind of after that, I was like, now I know how much work this takes and like generally what, how much preparation goes into it. So I could kind of like go off on my own and start to like figure it out more. Are you more excited about doing murals or do you have another direction in mind for what you want to do? Yeah, I want to do more murals. I think um, I want to do a lot of different things. And so murals will probably be on that list for like a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, they're great. (laughs) I saw you worked with Global Street Art, and they're, they're London-based, is that correct? Yeah. How did that happen? Is that from when you went the last time? Yeah, so, um, shout out to Apple One, because him, he, I was, like, on my way to London, and I think I might have, like, asked Facebook or some something I was like hey like is there someone I should link up with and um yeah Apple was like oh when you're in London you should hit up my friend Lee we were like in this breakdance crew together so like he now runs this non-profit art thing called Global Street Art so when I got to London I, I hit Lee up and he was like that's like normal for them they get hit up like every day so he was like yeah just call us when you're here man like it's like four months out like I can't schedule anything so I got there and they're in Shoreditch and I went over and they were super cool they gave me all of the paint they like sent their intern out to film me doing this mural and they just gave me this huge wall in Shoreditch for the day and were like yeah like fucking go for it so so it's really dope yeah, they seem like a really great organization. That's, yeah. That's awesome. That mural was crazy, too, because um, I had painted that, and then, like, two weeks later, I was back in Seattle, and I had hit up my now really good friend, Michael Moody, who's a lettering designer, uh, lettering artist and graphic designer, and he had seen the mural uh, when he was in shortage work at like doing work stuff and so he was like oh that's crazy I like just saw your work and so he he knew who I was through that and then we developed this like bigger friendship and like working relationship but it's just funny how those things work yeah it was cool yeah, yeah. I, I saw a 10 hundred mural when I was over there the yeah time. totally was 10 like, hundred was just there yeah by the time I left it had already been tagged over oh really but how did you how did you link up with him ten hundred? Um, I was following his work like everybody else for like a couple years when he was like based out of the Urban Legends spot just to the left of it, and then when he opened Statics, I think I just sent him a message and was like, "Hey man, like, story looks fucking cool. Like, congratulations!" And then. I think he invited me to have a piece in the opening show and so I brought it I remember bringing it by and like checking the place out and just telling him if you ever need extra help around here like let me know I've done retail stuff before I don't think I had but he was super cool about it and then I think he needed a hand one day doing some store stuff and I was just like have been helping out ever since it seems like he kind of creates opportunities for a lot of people do you think he's opened some doors for you that weren't open before yeah absolutely he's super generous he's like connected me with some awesome client work I mean he I work at the store really just working there I feel like I've met so many people face to face who are like oh you're Leo or oh, I was looking for a mural artist. And so it's cool, like, working at an art store that people, like, frequent. It feels like I got to be, like, sort of in the epicenter of, like, a, you know, there's all these, like, micro art groups. Like, there's, like, the Drunk and all of these different ones. And I think Statics is its own, like, little 
circuit. Yeah, but like, what are you working on right now? Is there like a big project or? Um, I mean, like in this in this moment, I'm kind of like looking back at this year. This year was kind of like the best year for art for me. I've only been doing it full time for a little over two years now, um, so. I'm kind of in this place where uh, I know I have to just keep doing everything that I've been doing. Like, I don't really have any huge visions right now for what the future could hold. I'm kind of, like, trying to actually hold some space for imagining, like, what it could be like at a larger scale. But um, I do have, like, a business manager slash coach slash really close friend that I work with and so we'll probably set some some yearly goals and I think yeah the hard thing for me is I'll do this thing where I'll be like okay next year like I really need to do this and we were just talking yesterday and he's like you always do this you always say that you like need these things but really you just really it seems like you really want them and so I think that it's like hard for me to recognize that what what I really am going to be up to for the next year is just exactly what I was up to this year and that like all of the kind of bigger things that happened this year were a result of these like daily practices and goal setting things that I did where it's literally like on a daily basis taking a step forward so it's kind of like humbling in a way and I'm someone who like likes to skip steps and like it's just like not gonna work like that for me I have to just keep plugging away at it and kind of you know doing everything that got me the success that I got this year which was just working really hard and being alone in this studio a lot <laughs> you can really dig in when you do that it's worth it yeah for sure is there like a few artists or one artist in particular that you would that you would like not necessarily want to emulate but that you can learn from what they've done and build on it, you know, like Shepherd Fairy or somebody like that? Uh Yeah, I mean there's like probably a couple. Like everybody has like a little piece of something that I want. Like you know, Ten Hundreds really figured out, like, the business of being an artist in a way that, like, I use a lot of his models for trying to, like, emulate that in my work, and then uh, I really like Biscoe Smith out of New York. I've met him a couple times. He's, like, just a really nice, humble dude, and just, like, filled with a lot of wisdom, and who else I mean yeah I don't know I'll just say those two guys for now like really anyone who's traveling and working and like making it work for them I don't know is there like one thing that you one artistic accomplishment that if it happened you'd be like holy shit I fucking made it like is there like no like not a side of, side of a huge building because you've kind of already done that but like other cities or like where would you if you could do anything else other than be right here creating like where would you go and what would that look like money or no option yeah for sure I don't there's definitely not like one thing uh like I was trying to think of like would it be like a thing in juxtaposed magazine I don't I don't really think like any one thing would would really do it but the thing that I have had as a vision for myself since I started was this idea of like creating um a network or a, a circuit in the same way that like you could think of pro snowboarders or pro athletes like you have these people who are so good at this thing and they can do it year round so when it's winter time in Seattle they're here whatever and then when it's summer, spring, they can go to New Zealand and keep doing that thing. So throughout the entire year, they can just engage in their craft and be really honed in with it. And I think that like seeing the emergence of like street art and mural festivals coming to be and like through social media, how it's connected us with like the globalization of the art scene. 
so for me I've always had this dream of like like running with this like international art movement and like creating a circuit for myself and like going to these places and putting energy into them and then going back and every single time you go back you're putting more energy into the circuit and to the point where maybe then you could like bring a friend with you and then you could take someone from Amsterdam and bring them back and they could do classes at statics and so I really have this like thing that I want that I think I'm just gonna have to like build out slowly which is to to be able to be like globally active as an artist and to like get compensated well for that and to really like be crop multicultural in like where and and how I work it seems like you've already taken some good steps to making that happen does it feel like you have kind of so they're baby steps but I mean yeah I've like met some really cool people I'm heading to Mexico February 5th through the 13th my homies down there have a mural festival that they're throwing so I'm gonna go kick it and paint and uh, my dad lives down there so I'm that's gonna be fun as hell I'm looking forward to it yeah I definitely believe that you're already doing that already but then maybe you're not you know you feel like you still have more levels up to go yeah for sure I mean it's kind of hard when the money's not showing up yeah it doesn't really no one really wants it to be about that but yeah for sure I'm like I'm like a pretty like I guess conservative when it comes to like spending money on things like if I like travel somewhere I really like to make sure that when I come back I like have enough money saved up so that I'm not like scrambling around trying to figure out like because I can't I can't like go back to having some part-time job like apart from working at statics that that would be like losing the game kind of so I'm trying to stay ahead of it enough to the point where I can like plan trips out and go for work and stuff and like I think the bigger things are going to be like getting back over to like Europe and Asia because those are the places where I really have to like still do a ton of networking Mm -hmm. so I saw somewhere in the interview that you you were encouraging people to reach out to people that you think that you thought maybe might be way out of your league Mm -hmm. because they and what has that happened to you already yeah a little bit I mean like I hit people up when I was going to Europe who I was like maybe they'll hit me back and maybe not but I'm pretty good at writing emails and like I was just really straight up I was like hey I'll be here from these for these dates like I'm really interested in your work I'd love to like get coffee with you or grab a beer and see your studio and talk with you about like your practice and what you've been up to and I just tried to send out like 50 to each country I was going to and specifically to artists in those places and like I would get like three or four actual responses back and those people would be down to meet up so you kind of just got that's how I like made it happen for me for sure and people won't always hit you back and it's just like don't take it personally yeah yeah because a lot of people even though you may not see it this way already a lot of people look up to you already as like someone who's kicking ass and doing it all the way do you feel like you're there or do you feel like yeah it's funny I don't I'm like maybe too like isolated to actually like have any of that being reflected back at me but maybe more in like the past month or two some of my closer friends have started to kind of be like hey like you know you're doing pretty well right and I'm I'm kind of like slowly letting it and be like okay I'm doing all right I'm like wicked hard on myself so I never really feel like I'm doing that great but it's nice to hear and I appreciate that people resonate with what I'm doing so I had a studio sale and someone said that um he really liked my work but he also really liked how I talked about my work almost as much as the work itself and that like I think that that's always something that I've wanted is just like to be able to offer some level of either inspiration or insight into the creative process. And so to hear that that's like landing for people, I was very grateful for that. 
Well, I kind of think that, I mean, you it, it, hearing you talk about it is really great. And that also could be something that you could learn from Ten Hundred. Because he does a really great job of using his voice and documenting what he's doing. Because I think people would really like to see, like, maybe, like, time lapses of what you're doing with you voiceovering. Like, what's going on in your mind and just sharing your art journey like is that how do you feel in front of the camera like is that something you would do i mean like maybe it would be super dude shout out to peter because like to me he just works so hard and like uh, it's it's a lot to like film yourself and he had all of the like audio engineering experience and i think he like taught himself the video stuff and I'm trying to like wrap my head around like how much that would be, but it kind of seems like if I want to like scale up a bit, I, I, I almost need to start doing that. Like every video I watch about like, oh, or like if you want to engage your audience more, like you really need to like give them something and understand what they're looking for. And I kind of just realized that last night actually, I was like, I don't really know like what people want from me and I think maybe part of it is exactly what you're saying is like they might want like the insight into like what I'm thinking and that's I'd be up for it it'd be cool if someone could film me it'd be cool if like I didn't have to do all of that myself although I most certainly will have to do it all myself which is a bummer but yeah yeah that can be done baby steps you know just like having something over you time lapse yeah totally I already have like a setup for doing that kind of stuff I just like play music that I really like rock with over it and stuff because it's just it's like considerably less work but I mean, now I can kind of see how that would work. Like you'd record the audio and yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, th I think that the reason that a lot of people, like the artists that are as famous as they are, it's because they are telling their story and we know, like when we see them, we, they, people know what they're supporting. For sure. So That's I think cool. I appreciate that. Like, yeah, the, the encouragement there. Because I know, I mean, I think one of the, my favorite things about watching, like, observing art and of all mediums, like music or anything, is to see the moments of pure, like, creative joy that are coming out of people when they're making this, like, when they have, like, creative revelations. And for, when people see that coming from you, they're mm -hmm. going to be like, there are so many levels to this. Cool. So, are you familiar with El Seed? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, he's kind of, he doesn't really make a lot of noise but it seems like you guys no he does though he's, what is what do you know about him i mean i know that he's like comes from arabic calligraphy i would kind of include him in the whole calligraphy scene i mean he's been doing it for a very long time and i he has like a fine art practice and like a he's in the streets like all the time doing murals and I like that he also does sculptures like there's so many I like the idea of like doing everything doing sculptures and installations and art pieces and murals and just like there's so much for art to engage in that's not just like walls and canvas it's like life art as a practice of like living your life so, yeah, big up, El Cid. Yeah, he did the album art for a Brother Ali album. Oh, and yeah, I, recently, that, yeah. his last album, right? Yeah. Cool. That was the tour, that my first rap tour. Was really? The Light tour. Whoa, so crazy. Could, did you meet him? I didn't meet El Cid, okay. but it was, you know, he was always present. Because right. they made a giant mural of that drawing and had it behind them on the stage. Sick. And, you know, selling merch, looking at it all day. Totally. It's beautiful. But do you, have you ever done album art? Actually, I'm like working with this guy right now. I, I emailed him because I was like, hey, I'm going to this meditation retreat, but now I'm not. So um, his name is Ill Chill, and uh, I'm doing some art for a single of his called So Many Ways. But I also did like the lettering for the last Black Wizard album. 
so that was cool um and i've done some stuff for my friends like all-star opera and um dj sweet spot out of new york so the music the music world is like i i want so much more to be like doing art for the music that i listen to regularly how do you think you can move into that more the same way that i connect with artists i just hit people up i just hit il chill up and told him how much i bump his album in my studio like on a like daily basis when i'm working and he liked the work and then i reposted that track of his that he had just put out on soundcloud and he was like hit me in with a dm and was like oh by the way i'm looking for some album art official for that track let me know what you need and so we just started working on that are there any artists that are out there that you're like oh man i would love to do their album art yeah um man there's a lot let's see what have i been listening to recently oh shit I don't even know. There's so many. Like, it'd be cool to do art for, like, a lot of the, like... I, I've been listening to Bubba by Kay Trinata. Like, I would love to do work for those guys. Or, like, Sango or Mr. Carmack, any of those producers. Um, yeah. Do you think that your art would be translatable into music video form? Yeah, I mean, we've started to, like say we like a friend of mine who is pretty good with the video work we've like animated the line work and we've taken the mandalas deconstructed them and like you know had the rings move in inverse directions at like different time speeds and stuff like that so i think that there's a lot of potential probably just need to experiment more and like yeah, I could imagine creating, like, a reel or, like, an example of what that could be and then, like, sending that to artists and seeing if they're interested. That would be really cool. Now, like, on, on Spotify, when you play a song, there can, if you look at the album... So it visualizes yeah, yeah, and sometimes it's just, like, a 15-second loop. Yeah, totally. But, but that's... I mean, there's some great ones out there, like Flying Lotus, and... I mean, it's just like, are you kidding me? But, I mean, it's all, it's all right there. It's just sort of like... I don't know. Which... Which step do you go? Because every day, like when you when you wake, like I used to, do you start out with the, the thirty minute meditation and then go from there? Like, what's your daily routine to like? Yeah. Get all this stuff done. I mean, like I have like a task list. Like I was saying, I work with someone, and so the way that we've figured out like what works best for me is, to set some really specific, measurable yearly goals and then we do a quarterly check-in and then uh we do a weekly meeting and so every week we're setting goals for the next week and then when we meet we can like track the percentage of how well i did on the previous week and then uh when we do the quarterly check-in like you can average the percentage of your weeks and that will tell you how close you are to hitting your yearly goals and so you can it's like a a really good feedback system for adjusting how much harder or you need you might need to be working and so every day I like have this checklist of things and it's you know there are certain things that I do every day like exercise and yoga meditate Um, and then like the brush meditations is one of them. And then I kind of try and do like, like one to three bigger tasks a day is like about what I have the capacity for. And so that might be like working on a painting or like sending cold emails out to potential clients or like putting a mural proposal together and stuff like that. But yeah, usually... Sometimes if I'm trying to, like, get some wins early on in the day, I'll do the brush meditations first. Yeah, it just kind of depends on how I feel, though. Yeah, how did you do in 2019? 2019 was crazy. I, like, did, you know, I I took care of myself better than I ever have, like, even working at jobs that I had before, like, doing screen printing, like, 
really anything. This has kind of been like the best year of just like meeting people, of feeling creatively fulfilled. I was like walking um, with, and I was telling my dad just about like what my life was like these days. And uh, there's like, I have like autonomy and mastery and purpose, which like there's this really great TED talk about like what employees need at their job to feel like whole and complete and like be motivated to show up every day and I kind of realized I like have all three of those things and so this year has kind of just been like just digging into like all of it gosh that's so exciting so what do you have like besides the Mexico trip is there any other trips you have lined up yeah um shout out Michael Moody and the Night Shift crew. We're going to LA to work on some more murals for Schaefer Chop Shop, which is like a marketing agency. So that'll be early this year and then Mexico and then coming back. And um, I have a really cool show planned at an architecture firm here and then that's kind of like what's on the books right now so we'll see you know everything just kind of pops up and pops off if you can make it happen but I want to like I I have four international mural projects on my like goals for this year and excluding Canada and Mexico so I know this year I'll probably either be going back to Asia or Europe for like a larger chunk of time can global street art provide you opportunities in other countries? I don't think so. I think they're based out of London. I'm sure, like, Lee has just the most insane network. Um, but, like, it's not like we stay in touch, really. So I would have to hit him up and see if he could help me out with something. But it would be cool. Because, like, their model of a business is really dope. And I'm sure that there's just others just like that in different parts of the world and so I think you know you it's cool to like figure out like who like the main nodes of the network and like the the main connectors and like you go straight to them and then try and branch out from there who do you think are the main connectors in Seattle <laughs> um I mean, like, Casey Weldon really holds it down with the drunk, and 1000 has statics, a lot of people come through there. I don't know anything about the fine art gallery world, because that's just, like, not, I haven't gotten there yet, so I can't really speak to that, but, um, who else? Yeah, I don't really know. Do you know Joey Nix? Fuck yeah, of course. Joey Nix's <laughs> studio is like across the street, of course. And Joey Nix was the, was the person who got me to do the crocodile mural. And I mean, Jupiter is just like, I feel like it's like that bar in the Star Wars movie uh, where all of the like bounty hunters and the <laughs> outlaws hang out. It's like it's the, the dopest art bar in Seattle. Yeah, what can you tell us about the Belltown Corridor project? The Belltown Corridor project is amazing. It's kind of Joey Nix, and at, at a time he was working with um, Trees and Gallery as well, but basically uh, he's like either paying money out of his pocket or raising money through Jupiter to just get murals painted. Because Belltown, the alleys are like kind of gnarly, and so I think his vision for that is like eventually to just have them all full of art and to work with like the Seattle Tourism Board and, and get them from doing the Pike Place tours to get up into Belltown and start doing like bigger art mural tours. But that project is really dope. And like recently he did this thing where he had artists come in and live paint at Jupiter and then he would like pay us for the night and then he would keep the painting and the painting would get auctioned off and he donated half of that money to the Special Olympics and then the other half he's using to fund the mural projects. So it, I just, I appreciate Joey a lot. He's like, it's, 
man, I find it kind of like rare when there's like really cool Seattle artists who are very open to talking and like they're very generous. I also just met the dudes from Electric Coffin. Some people know them, some people don't. Their work is incredible. They like are just a full scale art house and uh, design studio. And they're kind of both in the like commercial art world and the fine art world. And I like had lunch with them and they were so dope and so like open and like welcoming. And I, I, didn't, I didn't have any expectations, but I definitely like when you were asking me about people who I was kind of like interested in emulating or like, like they have like seven, seven employees and they're just doing so much cool stuff. I like how they have kind of a really like playful approach to the work that they do and they do it really well. So they're, those guys are great. What about uh, the Soto track project? Have you been a part of that or do you know much about it? No, I think it's over now, but um, Dom and Gage, Gage Hamilton, I think were the people I know there were more, but they those are the folks that I know who were part of putting that together, and I think that it's beautiful. It looks really nice down there. I applied for it twice, but didn't get in, so and now it's full up, but it was really cool to just, like, have artists from other countries and stuff. Like, it's beautiful. Every time I take the light rail, I'm, I'm stoked to see it. How did you meet Steven? That's the guy that... Yeah, Steve, yeah, yeah. Um, Steven and I were both at Evergreen together, and so I went to Evergreen to take art classes, but their art program, like, for what I was interested in, was just, like, not what I was looking for at the time, and so I, for some reason, ended up taking business classes because I kind of, like, knew I wanted to be a creative person, but I also wanted to understand how to like support a life as a creative person and so uh Stephen was in my first business class and we ended up taking several together and just going down that track and he's like a few years older than me and could kind of like help me along in those classes and I just remember like you know he was running a couple different companies at the time and so we were just like gonna be entrepreneurial people together and he we've just like stuck around and been good friends for each other since then and then a little over a year ago he was like hey look like I'm always giving you advice about business stuff and like sometimes you listen to me and it goes well and you appreciate it and like sometimes it just like completely goes one in the air out the other and he was in this position of like transitioning from working as a con uh like a contract employee for microsoft doing hydroponic food systems and so i think he was like needing some extra income or something but he was like why don't i start like helping you with these business decisions and you can pay me and like if you pay me you'll listen to me and I think that it'll be worth it and I was like eh, I don't know and I could just like listen to you for free and but I, I did and so now we've like continued to dial in the process I've kind of opened up my network to him and like brought in some of my really close friends who now also work with him and so we have this small like kind of test group of people who are all using this similar system of like accountability and goal tracking and like feedback uh, and everyone finds it super helpful and so it's cool it's like the system refines itself and we all talk to each other so it's that's working really well I think that there's like part of something that I'm super passionate about is helping people transition into more full-time creative careers and like I'm certainly not an expert at this point but I've also realized in the past couple months that like I've gotten myself to the point where I'm like making okay money and I have a studio and like my life is like 
kind of put together in a way that I didn't imagine it could be. So I do have something to offer people and I'm like working with my friend Olivia right now and we're trying to like break her out. And so I think like the more people that I do that for, the more experience we get, we'll have a lot of insight to share with people who are interested in stepping out, but it's so much work. And that's kind of the thing I really appreciate about working with Steven is that he's extremely blunt and like we're he's like one of my best friends but he will often call me on bullshit or tell me that I'm being lazy or he'll tell me when an idea I have he thinks is just terrible (laughs) and it's not like there is opinions he's really like connected to like a logic tree of like why that's not gonna work and so he's been someone that's held me down in that reality of like you need to just work hard step by step and it's about the small daily tasks kind of thing where I'm always trying to like skip steps and go a million miles like in another direction he's like you keep jumping out of the ship man (laughs) I'm trying to keep you in the ship and so that's just been like probably the single greatest thing in helping me actually like get my shit together so i actually have a question for you from the ring of doom oh sick yeah he's um trying he's here on earth to like shine light on artists and help them realize that they have the power to change the world Mm -hmm. so he wants to know if you have a message for beings on other planets and other universes because the as you know like when people look at earth from far away they're like what a mess of capitalism but like what do you think is important for beings from other planets to know about humans oh man um i feel like like on the surface uh it would seem that like we're all really bent on kind of tearing each other apart and finding everything wrong with each other but like especially around this time of the year I think it really just highlights that like it most of us are just like trying to get along with each other and like global politics and things like that are fucking crazy and complex and like for the most part, just don't really represent the people living in those places. And so I feel like, you know, they're just going to have to look a little bit deeper and see that, like, humanity is pretty connected and things are going all right, even though they're really not in some ways. But that we're all just trying to, like work together and figure it out for the most part so be patient with us or i don't know help us out or something (laughs) (laughs) yeah 